Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. So for today's video, we're just going to get right on into it. It is a little bit of a weekend, get things done kind of thing, which is filmed over a couple of days. I believe I filmed this over three nights, so you can see various different outfit changes from myself going from evening to midday tonight and everything so on and so forth. So my first project in this weekend get things done was to finally hang up my wall of pictures, my gallery wall of my wedding pictures. So you can see I'm taking this kind of seriously and not just hanging them up willy nilly. So I actually made a template showing how big the pictures were, how much I wanted them spaced apart and everything like that so I can get a pretty good idea of how I wanted the wall to look with all my pictures on it. And as you can see here, I kind of marked off the center line of my wall as well as how high I thought the bottom of the picture should be, which I figured is about four and a half foot, maybe five off the ground, probably more like four foot ten. I'm five foot seven for reference. And then I started off taping the outline of the pictures. I wanted to do this so I could really get an idea of how the collage would look. So I did this to really figure out what the collage of the pictures would look like on the wall and I, if I could decide if I liked it or not. And it's always like the measure twice and do it once. And you'll see that multiple times throughout this video because I ended up marking things completely wrong. So I kind of mark things with a pencil first and then I go in with some just blue scotch painters tape to mark out exactly where I wanted the pictures to be. So as you can see here, this is my first of many mess ups I will admit on making this gallery wall because I hung the picture in the wrong place, which is why I highly recommend to make a template first so that you know exactly where you want these pictures to be hanging. You see I'm using my phone. I did get an app on my phone which is a level and it is actually pretty accurate. I mean I didn't care if some of these were slightly off angle because I can always just fix them. But it gives you a pretty good idea of what is straight so I'm using that after I trace the outline of the pictures just to make sure I'm tracing them in as straight of a line as I can. So as you can see, I do this all around. I had 8x8, 11x14, and then one 16x20 frame picture. So I took an outline, took a pencil, traced the picture, and covered it with blue tape.
it is now day two of hanging pictures and I realized that this was slightly off-centered. I actually have a laser measuring tape, which is how I measured most of this, and I figured it was off-center by about three inches. So as you can see here, I'm moving all of the frames towards my left about three inches just to get it better centered. And that was again my error, which is why I always recommend to make a template. That way you can just look it off of there and make sure that you're doing everything right. And then what you can see me doing here is just measuring how far down I need to place the nail holes in the wall so that I can only put minimal amount of nail holes into the wall since we are renting. So I'm measuring how far down each one is and then how far of a spread I need to, especially for the larger frame because the larger frame is hung up by two nails and the smaller ones are just hung up by one. So I decided this bigger frame needed a more secure fastening mechanism, I guess you can call it a more secure hanger than what just came on the frame itself. So I got this, it's just my local hardware store, these little zigzag hooks, and I just put that exactly in the center and then re-measured how far down and then the spread of how far away it was so I knew where to place the nails in the wall. So after I put the nails into the wall, I just removed all the tape because I figured that this would be the easiest thing to do is to remove the tape now instead of once the pictures were hung like I originally thought, but had a new idea and did that. And then you can see in a little bit that I do try to erase some of the marks, which is the little eraser that I had, which was a complete fail. It would have taken so long. So there's still one thing that I have to do is erase all the little pencil marks, which you can't actually see in this video, but there are a bunch there which again makes it easier to erase just pencil off of the wall rather than doing multiple nail holes. But I'm so glad I finally got to doing this project. I've been wanting to do this for a while now and I finally just Walked up the courage to do it all by myself and hang it, which I didn't really mind. And I'm sorry for it to go blurry in and out. And I did realize I hung this one three inches out too far, so I had to move that back over. But I am really, really happy with the final result. As you can see in a little bit, I just moved back some furniture, set up my couch really nice, and I just think it is the perfect touch to my home. The second thing that was on my to-do list was to hang up this heart-shaped garland, which was actually fairly easy to make. I just took some twine and cut out various size hearts, punched a hole in the middle, and then just hung it up with some finishing threads, some white threads that you can barely see the thread and it just looks like the hearts are hanging. And I thought that this was a smart idea to make one day as I had some time down at work and I was able to do so and I thought it was going to be easy to transplant home. Well, it actually wasn't. It took me about 15 minutes to untangle both sets of twine ropes here that I had of hearts. So that was a fun project. Like I said, it took me about 15 minutes. This is very sped up right now.
So I didn't measure for this or anything. I just hung it into this little header that we have in our rental with just push pins. They make really small nail holes and I figured I could just drape it on over top, wrap some twine around it in places that I needed to and let some of the corners just hang down and dangle, but not too low so that little Lulu does not get them. Really happy how this turned out as well it just gives it a little bit more of that Valentine's Day and a little bit more homey feel to my house and the next thing on my to-do list happened the next day or later that night I think actually that was to vacuum the little landing that we have upstairs and I actually got some carpet cleaner which is just like a powder I believe it's from Arm & Hammer or OxyClean something like that. If I can find it, I'll try to leave a link in the description box. And you just put that on the carpet first. It eliminates pet odors and everything like that. You can see the box right there. And I sprinkled it onto the carpet and then just vacuumed it up. It does recommend to leave it sitting on for about 15 minutes, but I wasn't about to do that. I just wanted to get this stuff done. So I vacuumed the landing and then I actually vacuumed the stairs as well, putting that carpet desanitizer and deodorizer on the carpet. Then I wasn't actually planning on showing uh, what I made for dinner that night, but I figured as I was doing it, I might as well just film it. So I was making some spaghetti squash. So I just cut the spaghetti squash in half, scooped out the seeds, put some 21 seasoning salute from Trader Joe's, some salt and pepper on the inside. And I just sprayed the inside with some sprayable olive oil. You can use real olive oil if you would like to. I just think the spray kind is a little bit easier. Flip them over on the cut side and then I cut some slits in it. Put them into the oven about 40 minutes at 475 and then they'll come out looking like this. Absolutely gorgeous, beautiful, and so tender and so soft. So the way that I get my spaghetti squash out is I just use two forks and if they're really tender, you can see I got so much spaghetti squash out of this medium sized squash. I was able to get really into the flesh of the inside and just peeled out both sections. This is gonna be enough for two very, very generous portions. I actually don't mind eating a lot of this because it is just vegetables, to be honest, and it is really healthy for you. So I just put this into a bowl and weighed it. I don't really weigh my foods that much anymore. I just do it a little bit more so I could have two even portions. So I portioned that out, put half of it into a Tupperware container, and then proceeded to put half onto my plate. And I was making a little bit of a spaghetti style. So I heated up some meatballs that were in my freezer and I put some extra sauce in there as well. Cut them into quarters and place them on top of the spaghetti squash. I then took some just grated Parmesan from a shaker, put that on top. And I just got some bread as well, put some butter on it, and then just some garlic seasoning on everything. And this is how my dinner turned out. It was so delicious, so filling. Even though it is just vegetables, again, the meat sauce or the meatballs in the sauce did help make it filling, but I highly recommend. Next project that I did was to mop the floors and I didn't do a full mop of the floors. I really only do a full mop of the floors about every other week and that is when I really move the furniture like the TV stand and the chairs and the sofa. But for this week, I just decided to mop around it so I could at least get a nice clean floor. And this is the last project that I had to do on my weekend get things done list. So I hope you really enjoyed this video. I'll just let you all watch the rest of it. Like I said, cleaning the floors was my last thing to do. 
I did move around just some little furniture as I could that was easy for me to do. But that was all that I did this weekend. I hope you enjoyed this clean with me video. If you do like these kind of videos, make sure to give it a big thumbs up as well as leave a comment down below so that I know that you would like to see more cleaning videos from me. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and click the notification bell as well so that you're notified of every time I upload a video. And until next time, I hope you all have a great one and I'll see you all later. Bye.